Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Um, thank you all for joining. Uh, my name is Autumn Gorman. I am a development finance specialist in the broader private sector engagement team at USAID. Uh, my work includes our PACE program, which does entrepreneurship and small and growing businesses ecosystems, as well as developing new solutions at the intersection of gender, finance, and the private sector. Before joining the agency, I spent over 15 years in the private sector, and by that, not at all affiliated with development. Um, and, and that includes supporting uh, small and growing businesses through my own boutique consulting firm. I am truly excited to be here today to introduce you to the beta launch of our Finance Wiki on Market Links. It's an up and running online, online resource that contains an overview of more than 50 interventions in the finance space um, and ways to catalyze private financing and development. Um, we recognize that not everyone um, knows, uh, is familiar with topics related to development finance. So we hope this online wiki offers a space where users can continuously learn while improving, adapting, and building out content. For those who may not be familiar, let me start by answering, um, what is a wiki? Um, a wiki is a user-driven online collection of resources that provides information in an easy-to-follow format and promotes collaboration among its users. As we go through this tool today, you will see some notes where information is, quote, coming soon. These gaps will continue to be filled as our team gathers more content internally and as we see contributions from folks like you. Um, we'll have more on that later. Um, th you'll find that this is a little bit different from your average market links webinar and that we're going to walk you through the rationale and framework of this wiki as well as give you a demo of how you, the user, can interact with, learn from, and contribute to the wiki. By the end of the webinar, we hope you will walk away with a basic understanding of this new tool and how you can start exploring it on your own. Although the site is live, we are not using a live demonstration for technological reasons. Um, we had some audio issues this morning, so we know bandwidth on the internet is a bit of an issue. We didn't want that to uh, affect this presentation. Um, but thank you again for joining us. Whether you are a USAID staff member, an implementing partner, or other development professional, we look forward to hearing from you on ways that we can continue to make this resource most useful. We will have time for questions at the end, but you can submit them at any time via the chat box. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and get kicked off. We have with us today um, a couple of colleagues from USAID, Lawrence Camp and Wade Channel, and a couple of colleagues from Deloitte, which helped us develop this with uh, the wiki content. Steve Watkins and Francesca Cavalli. We'll let them introduce themselves as we go through this call, but with that, I'll hand it to Lawrence. Thank you, Autumn. Um, uh, thank you uh, to Market Links for having us be part of this webinar, as well as all of those who've been involved uh, with launching the wiki. My name is Lawrence Camp. Um, I'm on the private sector engagement team at USAID. My main focus in development is, is finance specifically how to increase the flow of private capital. And by private capital, we mean funds provided through the financial system and funds which seeks a full or market financial return. And we'd like to do this uh, systemically through strengthening financial markets, which is a critical element in the journey to self-reliance, as well as transactionally, crowding in transactions here and now, which are important for development. I'd like to start. Uh, by painting a picture of how we've seen finance and development shifting over the past decade or so. And the reality is that there have been enormous changes which have huge implications for how we think about development. As shown in the slide, the bottom line, Official Development Assistance, or ODA, has been relatively flat over the past 20 years. And above that, uh, foreign direct investment, the blue line, has um, uh, risen, slowly risen, but the remarkable growth is really within our present country. Our private capital pools, the third line, mainly in the banking system, have surged, as has the top line, uh, public capital, top line. 
what this indicates is that the availability of capital in our present countries is no longer a binding constraint to development, assuming that it can be channeled to productive investment. This suggests a change in the role of development agencies, moving away from funders of development into a role of finance catalysts enabling those local domestic uh, capital pools, as well as international capital, to be channeled to development. And that's where the art of finance comes in. Efficient financial markets not only bundle and pool capital, but they allocate that capital as well to productive investment. The caveat there is efficient financial markets. And in our present countries, financial markets are still evolving and the cost of and constraints uh, of and to financing are higher. The good news is that we have a number of tools that we can deploy to catalyze financing to unlock that local capital and put it to use. And those are within uh, this wiki. Here in the private uh, sector engagement team, we are continuously thinking about how to best support USAID staff members in the field as they identify and navigate ways to catalyze private finance and development. Over the past few years, we have captured and shared lessons in numerous trainings, textbooks, and most recently in this online wiki resource that we are excited to, to share with you today. Our team is really looking forward to sharing this resource with you today. Over the next 20 minutes, our Deloitte counterparts will walk through the structure of the finance wiki and then demonstrate how the tool can be used in a real-life scenario. After that, we'll open it up for about 10 minutes of Q&A. And with that, I hand it to Francesca, who will share a bit more about the wiki. Thanks, Lauren. And thank you all for joining us today to learn a bit about what our team has helped put together over the past few months. My name is Francesca Cavalli, and I am part of the Deloitte team that worked with USAID to pull together the finance wiki we are sharing with you today. As we jump into the nuts and bolts of the wiki, I'd like to begin by introducing the organizing framework of the site, the five-point framework first developed by Lawrence and Autumn at USAID for the Mobilizing Finance and Development course for USAID staff. This framework is used to explain and organize the complexities of private finance in developing economies. The vertical, or green elements, of the framework represent the broad systemic conditions in which the finance sector of an economy operates. The horizontal, or blue elements of the framework, finance seekers and finance providers and intermediaries, represent the parties to any individual financial transaction. The facilitators and disruptors element acknowledges that the many, in that the many innovations outside of traditional finance that we as development professionals can harness. Taken together, these elements can be used to describe almost any financial transaction. Suppose, for instance, that an individual keeps their wages in checkings and savings accounts for the bank. Payment systems, part of the financial infrastructure of an economy, helps them easily access the funds in these accounts to make purchases. For example, by using a debit card to buy a cup of coffee. Of course, today we see that there are new ways to exchange money for goods and services. Facilitators and disruptors like digital currency and fintech can also help us purchase that cup of coffee. Sometimes individuals become finance seekers who require funds greater than what's available in their checkings or savings accounts to make a big purchase. For this, they might turn to finance providers like commercial banks for additional sources of capital, like a loan. A finance provider depends on strong enabling conditions to feel secure enough to extend lending. The macroeconomic environment of an economy, for instance, will influence the bank's in willingness to lend. Lenders also want to be sure they are legally protected in the event of a borrower default. 
As you can see, all five elements of this framework work together to influence the nature of every financial transaction, as indicated at the center of the framework. On the Finance Wiki site, you will see these five elements listed on the left-hand side of the screen in a navigation pane. By clicking on these links, you can easily move about the site. The pages can be explored in any order. Included within each section are two things. First, a description of the element. What does it mean to be a finance seeker? Who is included in that group? Second, you will see a list of finance interventions that are related to that element, broken out in the navigation pane to the left. Here we see one intervention related to finance seekers is titled Partial Grants and Cost Sharing for Financing. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, the points of the framework almost always work together. Therefore, it is important to note that these interventions are often related to multiple points of the framework. This grouping was created as a means to help think through the categories to better understand these linkages. To find out more about a specific intervention, simply click its name. Say, for example, you'd like to learn more about partial grants and cost sharing. After selecting the name of the intervention, you're brought to an intervention specific page. Every intervention page includes a description, a list of constraints that are addressed by that intervention, any advantages and disadvantages, must have critical points or questions to consider. A vignette is also included at the bottom of the page to exemplify how the intervention was applied in a real life scenario. Finally, a call out box at the top of the page contains additional resources where you can learn more. You'll see here where the interactivity comes into play. This link, submitted here, allows users to contribute their own content and ideas. If you select this link, you will be brought to a Google form where you will be given the opportunity to submit additional content to the USA PSC team for consideration as part of the Market Links Finance Wiki. Maybe you have a great example of where an intervention was successfully implemented during which you learned a lesson you wish to share. What interventions are we missing or need more content? Have you come across a great resource for development finance practitioners? Now, before we move on to a short demo of how this wiki could be used in a real-life scenario, I'll point out a few other parts of the wiki page. Under Chapter 1, here on the left, you will find useful resources, including an overview of the wiki tool, a primer on basic concepts in finance, as well as a glossary of terms that are used throughout the site. This is also a great place to start if you are unfamiliar with foundational concepts in finance. With that, I will hand it off to Wade, who will introduce one concept that can be explored further using the Finance Wiki. Thanks, Francesca, and good morning to all. Um, really appreciate everybody being on here. This, this is a big issue. Any of you who have done work in the business world uh, will find that one of the first things you hear about problems is access to finance. So we are looking forward to addressing that more with this Wiki tool. Uh, as for myself, I come from a background including finance, secured lending, etc. Um, a couple of years ago, actually about 10 years ago, I introduced a new concept to, um, to the gender architecture. Uh, many of you are familiar with gender transformative, gender neutral, gender blind. Uh, I was basically gender stupid and consequently uh, I have been learning a lot over the past few years and I, I love what we're doing today on movable property because it is so so important to women's access to finance as well as to access to finance generally. I work in the Office of Gender Equality and Women's Empowerment now and love it there. Uh, always happy to hurt, help out on gender issues but also on finance issues. Anyway, as you heard Lawrence mention at the start of the webinar, development professionals are increasingly interested in topics related to development finance. Amid the buzzwords and hot topics in the field is one opportunity area referred to as movable property lending or MPL. It's also called secured lending, secured transactions or SPR. It's got uh, pledge registries and pledge issues. There are a number of names. We're using movable property lending because people immediately understand that we're not talking about mortgages. We're talking about something else. In a minute, I will pass 
I'll you along to Steve, who will demonstrate the wiki using this as an example and how a development professional could use a resource like this wiki to learn more about something like MPL. As you may know, one of the biggest barriers to overcoming access to loans or other credit is the need to provide collateral. Historically, in most of the world, and until recently, um, it pretty much in all of the world, only real property, such as land and buildings, could be pledged as collateral uh, in terms of, of ownership of things. You could also use some guarantees and things like that. But if you went to a bank and had no property to, to pledge, you had no loan when you left. In a society where the vast majority of the population doesn't have clear land ownership, like some of the other places where we work, it's a major barrier to accessing finance and economic growth. Movable property lending can play a critical role in increasing access to finance by allowing businesses or individuals to use assets other than real property assets such as inventory, vehicles, account receivables, equipment, livestock, future, crops, et cetera. Basically, if it has value, if the banks find it that it has value and the system recognizes it, it can be used. Although it's beneficial to youth, men, and others, it also provides great benefits to women in societies where nearly all the land is owned by men. And let me just note this, even where not uh, among the poor, mortgage lending is very questionable. And this is not, this protects people from losing their land if they can't repay by losing something else if they can't repay. Of course, that's not a great, uh, a great message there about losing whatever it is. But uh, mortgage lending means you're homeless when you can't repay. Movable property lending uh, means, well, not so great, but, uh, but you're borrowing against things that help you earn the money that you need to pay back. Anyway, a few years ago, I could go on and on about this. As many of you know, I have, uh, I have destroyed more than one social gathering by slipping into uh, discussion of these things and watching everyone leave. I'm glad you're still here. A few years ago, the uh, Columbia enacted a movable property system of laws with, with an electronic registry. Pretty much state of the art. At first glance, too, it looked like a roaring success. Thousands of new loans were being registered. On a closer look, however, it turned out that 90% were for cars and probably just old loans being registered to make sure that lenders kept their you know, claims over the cars. Not much new was actually happening. Banks didn't know how to use the system and didn't understand how to develop new products. Movable property lending was brand new to everyone, so it was reasonable for them to say, we don't know how to use this. So USAID has been working with them to learn how to develop these new products and how to extend lending through movable property. Steve will tell you more about that in a minute. Anyway, movable property is a great example about how interventions rely on different elements of the five-point framework to come together to expand access to finance. First, you need capable lenders or finance providers who offer specialized products, services, and capabilities and who understand their customers' unique constraints. You also need capable borrowers or finance seekers with business acumen, bookkeeping, management skills, and immovable assets such as inventory or equipment that they can pledge as collateral. MPL, movable property lending, can also necessitate systemic changes in an economy. In other words, changes to the enabling conditions for example, an enabling law is needed to permit the use of movable property as collateral. Economies often sometimes also need to improve their financial infrastructure. For example, by building movable property registries is a first step toward getting MPL off the ground. And finally, the concept of movable property lending involves many moving parts in order to be implemented successfully. I'll hand it over to Steve, who will share a little bit about how we can learn from past lessons to support future implementation efforts by using the finance wiki. Thank you, Wade. And if we just click to the next slide, please. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Uh, I'm Steve Watkins. Um, as I think uh, also mentioned, I work with Deloitte. Um, in the past, I uh, had a career in banking I, I founded and ran my own small uh, a business and also worked for a number of economic development NGOs. So 
Um, I now bring all three of those together, uh, working at Deloitte and usually for USAID, on uh, development finance issues. Um, and uh, love my love my work, and very happy to be uh, on this uh, call with you all today. So let's have a look at how we could use um, this development finance wiki. Let's suppose that I'm actually not Steve at Deloitte. Let's assume now that I am a chief of party of a project project in the USAID presence country. Uh, let us say it's whichever country you are calling in from. And as chief of party, I just had a meeting with uh, my contracting officer's representative at the mission and was told that my uh, project really should think about advancing movable property lending to benefit the small businesses in, uh, in the country. And I'm thinking, OK, I need to find out what this movable property lending thing is all about. So I, of course, the first thing I think of doing is going to market links and looking at Development Finance Wiki, and I go to that first page that Francesca showed us with the five-point framework. And one thing that I remember uh, the USAID person telling me was about we need a movable property uh, registry uh, in the country. So as I look around that first page, I notice that under finance infrastructure, and I look down here, financial infrastructure, I see build collateral registries right here. So I figure, OK, let's have a look there. And I click on the, uh, the movable collateral registries number 2.4.2. If we can move to the next slide. And here I am. I find myself at this wiki page all about building collateral registries. And as I start reading it, I'm happy to find that the very second paragraph talks about movable property registries and in a way summarizes what Wade just said about this being an approach that allows people to provide collateral in the form of um, assets that are not random buildings, assets that might be, for example, machinery, equipment, the inventory and stock of a business or even the uh, invoices that have yet to be paid to a small business, and thereby allows people and businesses that don't have land and buildings or that don't feel financially secure enough to pledge their land and buildings to collateral to have collateral and therefore access finance. I also noticed that there's a rich resource base of additional documents, and several of them are specific to movable property lending. If you go to this site today, you'll see that among them, um, there's a document that is a global study of lessons of movable property lending in US energy presence countries. And you'll notice there is a sort of a deep dive case study of the experience in Colombia that Wade also mentioned. In any case, as I read on seeking to learn about movable property lending in the wiki, I come to the must have section and I notice that here it mentions that in order for this to work, there needs to be suitable enabling laws. And I'm thinking, ah, so it's not just about the registry, there's more to it. So I go back to um, the main page of the wiki, and I think, well, laws is part of enabling conditions. Could you have the next slide, please? And so under enabling conditions, whoops, back, back a slide. <laughs> Thank you. Under enabling conditions, I read through the different interventions, and I see down toward the bottom here, establish the legal and procedural foundation for secure transaction regimes. So I'm able then to re read again a description, what the legal constraints addressed are, the advantages of, of putting in place this legal framework, the disadvantages, and the various uh, sort of must-haves that need to be considered together with a case example or vignette. Here again, I look at the various resources that are available, and I notice there's one resource that's all about the benefits to women. So I click on that and open up this document. And this provides some more information about how uh, movable property lending can and has in countries opened up access to lending to women-owned businesses because all too often it is the men in that society rather than the women who own uh, the real estate, land and buildings. 
so movable property lending, you know, sort of levels the playing field somewhat for women. Now, I notice as I read this that really movable property lending seems to be taken advantage of, of primarily by you know, micro, small, medium-sized enterprises. And that makes me realize, and we can move to the next slide now, that makes me realize that the last project I led was all about providing technical assistance to small and medium-sized enterprises and helping them to complete um, finance proposals that are more compelling to finance providers. So I go back into the main menu of market links. I go to the finance seekers and see that there is an intervention about providing finance seekers with advisory support in building their proposals. And because I recently completed a project like this, I go to the resources, click on upload, and I fill in a form that lets me uh, upload and contribute the project report from my last project as an additional resource on the wiki. So now this is uh, Steve speaking again, not the uh, notional chief of party. I hope that from that very quick demo, you've got a sense of how if you come across a new topic in development finance, you can sort of intuitively use the five-point framework sort of um, gateway into the wiki to get a sense of where to go looking. But you'll likely find some guidance on a topic. And if you read that guidance carefully, you'll find that there are links to related to the topics that you can follow. There are resources you can access to provide much more information than the wiki itself. And also, you have the opportunity to strengthen this wiki by adding your own content, uh, thereby you know, building this resource for this community of all of us, this community of development finance professionals. Um, that's the end of my part of this demo. And uh, let me hand back to uh, Awesome to wrap things up and open up a bit of Q&A. Thank you, Steve. Um, this is great. And um, I, I apologize for some of the issues about visibility of the slides and some audio issues. Um, one, it convinces me that we made the right choice by not trying to do a live demonstration of the site. <laughs> um, but uh, it also, um, yeah, um, but the, all the resources, including the presentation itself, will be available online. And um, the wiki itself is live. So we encourage people to go ahead and poke around and explore and uh, um, discover things on their own. Um, I also want to note that we are aware there are gaps in this wiki, including in our own work. Um, but we didn't want to let that delay the launch of this uh, tool as a beta. Um, plus, we also are aware that we don't know everything, even though we may pretend to at times. Um, but like, how many times have we gone into something thinking one thing and then found out there was more to it as we got in? The movable property lending is one example. You can't just build it with the uh, financial infrastructure, the registries, and the enabling environment. Banks need to know how to use it, and uh, their customers need to know how to use it and to understand it. So there's a lot more to these things than we understand. The five points framework is um, what we chose to use is a way to structure this. We know that there are others out there and that it may not be perfect. Um, but we also want to note that this is a tool for everyone. We sincerely welcome contributions um, and to continuously improve this. Um, please share what you have and what you have done. Um, you can do so today. You can do so tomorrow. You can do that in the weeks and months to come. Um, and I also want to flag that we have not yet tagged anything that's specifically COVID related. Um, but uh, that is a possibility going forward. Although I think we've all learned a little bit that some of the challenges around accessing finance are pretty universal. It's just um, a matter of finding the right recipe, a combination of ingredients to address the challenges. And COVID will probably set a lot of things back um, as we go. So now let's I would like to take a few minutes to go ahead and answer some questions. Um, please go ahead and do that in the chat box. And uh, we'll go ahead and take some of those. So um, uh, uh, Sundarathan is asking how we can leverage the finance wiki for environmental projects in India. 
Is there anybody on the panel that would like to take that one? How about Lauren? This, this, this is Steve. I was actually just beginning to write a reply, but I'm happy to uh, verbalize one. Thank you for the question, Sir Darson. Um, so to give you a very detailed answer, we would need to have a bit more detail about your budget. However, in general, if you were to take a look at the five-point framework um, and think about the circumstances of your project through the lens of the five-point framework, you know, to what extent uh, are the environmental issues you're trying to address caused by the environmental issues you're trying to address? To what extent are they caused by you know, finance challenges in the community um, that uses or lives around those environmental resources? For example, quite often, uh, people and communities are forced to extract environmental resources unsustainably because they don't have other access to you know, sort of finance for um, you know, other businesses or to get through in times of hardship. So it may be um, an issue of not having the financial infrastructure to access uh, finance in that community. It may be that finance providers aren't familiar with the uh, more sustainable um, economic options within um, you know, that region, and so on and so forth. So as a general answer, I would say you know, if you feel that there are economic or financial drivers to those environmental issues, you can use the five-point framework as uh, a way of understanding those financial drivers and beginning to shape um, a, a finance solution. And then, of course, you can use the wiki to learn more about um, you know, whatever hypothesis you develop. I hope that's helpful. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Um, and for those that may not quite know um, where to start in this, you may want to take a look at the overview um, section of the wiki. Um, and uh, get a sense of things. You realize that this isn't a, you know, answer these questions that'll get you to a particular result. Um, uh, and this is the solution. That's rarely the case. Um, and uh, as my colleague Lawrence will say, it's a matter of which levers that you pull in order to help the system work more efficiently or work period um, to address the development challenge that you're trying to do. Um, uh, Susie asked a question about whether all the examples have to be from USAID projects. And I would say absolutely not. <laughs> we need to learn from each other. I think that um, you know, we meet with our World Bank and, and geo colleagues um, and even investors and finance providers regularly to learn from them. And we encourage um, all of those parties to go ahead and contribute um, as well. Um, so let's see, is there any other questions here? Um, Jump in on that, Autumn, as well as, far as the example. You know, obviously we're doing a use case presentation right now, and we're giving you great examples, but most of the secured lending work in the world in the past 10 years has been done by the World Bank, IFC, some by EBRD, Asian Development Bank, et cetera. Um, so as far as movable property lending, much, many of the resources are, are actually from outside our work. Uh, we're hoping to, to get back into this area for various reasons. We moved away from it these days, and we have a few things uh, going on. And hopefully this wiki will give you some idea of how to start thinking about those projects and, and what you might need. But we also have resources, human resources, back here in D.C. and elsewhere who can uh, help you once you get a sense of what's going on. Um, actually help you think through project design or project possibility. Um, yeah, thanks, Wade. I'm about ready to put my colleague Lawrence Camp on the spot a little bit if he wants to give a little preview to um, a diagnostic tool that he led the development of. That may that in the Wiki 2.0 version, we'd like to have them a little bit more connected to really help it uh, help users really dig in a little bit more. Um, but Lawrence, you can unmute yourself and maybe give a little preview on the um, diagnostic that you developed. Great. Thank you, Autumn. Um, so uh, as Autumn said, um, there are a number of different uh, levers, if you will, that you can pull. And the point is that there are a number of different um, ways in which uh, you could intervene uh, using that five-point framework to catalyze finance. The question, of course, is 
which is going to be the most effective way in terms of the near-term uh, transactional impact, while also trying to make sure you're getting the long-term sustainable impact. <laughs> so we have uh, developed a financial sector diagnostic tool uh, that really tries to uh, look uh, around the, the, the five elements in there to determine kind of where the, the most binding constraints are, the critical pain points are, um, and to uh, identify the solutions that hopefully will have the highest uh, impact on that. <clears throat> so we're baiting, uh, bait, betaing this right now in uh, Ukraine uh, and elsewhere, and uh, look forward to working with other missions who um, in countries who may want to uh, explore this as well. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Lauren. Um, a couple things to note is you'll see that there are many places in the wiki through which you could access that Google form um, in which you contribute things. And as I noted before, there's a lot of gaps in our own work. Um, for example, um, uh, Susie also asked about digital financial services and channels, and, and we know that our digital finance colleagues have a, developed a really awesome playbook <laughs> that is available publicly that um, may not yet be uploaded into the, uh, into the wiki, and, and that's just a matter of uh, time and just bandwidth. But we, as I said, we didn't want to delay launching this with what we had, no, recognizing there were gaps. So, um, yes, yeah, so there's um, certainly a lot more that can be uh, added. Um, we look, we're very, eh, excuse me, I feel like I'm going to sneeze. Um, uh, we, we are looking, uh, we would love to have more examples um, for different sectors. Um, I know our agricultural colleagues have a lot of work. Uh, energy, environment, um, yeah, pretty much education, health. There's there's a lot that is out there that our colleagues, even at USAID, have developed um, that could be that have yet to be uploaded here. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, we look forward to your contributions as we go. And I'm trying to follow the questions here. Um, uh, bank state feedback about the framework. Um, I'm not quite sure how all blanks have uh, felt about it, but in generally speaking, we have found this framework um, resonates well enough with anybody that we talk to, especially um, in the development kind of angle space or um, uh, most of the work that we do on a sector basis. Even though banks may not really get into all the weeds of some of these things, generally speaking, this is a we found it to be a pretty good place to start conversations. And then this could be used as a way to um, help identify some of those binding constraints that Laura mentioned. Um, let's see, do we have any other questions? Um, sorry, it's hard to talk and follow the chat box, especially when it's really tiny. Um, Hi, Autumn. Wait here. Let me jump in here. Regarding the framework, part of what I love about it is in my work along the years, I have um, seen that people tend to focus on one spot that they know well or, uh, you know, they hear that women can't get access to, to finance because the banks aren't addressing uh, their particular needs or et cetera. And yet there are a lot of other things that are actually going on. It may be, as we see here, finance seekers, do they have you know, viable books and records. Can they show a business that, that, that is making enough money to repay a loan? Um, are there spoilers, as has been noted there, with some of these areas? Um, I can tell you that uh, loan sharks are not fans of this. It cuts interest rates, so they may be in there. There are a lot of issues in the regulation. Are the banking regulations recognizing the change? So by having this framework and materials on it, we can move beyond um, overly simplified models of trying to achieve things. And as you know, Steve and I found in, in Colombia, we had made assumptions about demand for the product that, uh, especially in women's access to finance thinking, that weren't even there. Uh, the, the banks weren't really seeking to increase the level of women borrowers in part because they, um, they're small borrowers. And so the larger banks wanted larger borrowers. And 
by taking this kind of framework and ecosystem approach, we're able to look at the whole thing and not just address uh, what I like to think of as fixing uh, fixing a flat tire on a parked car with no engine. Uh, we need the whole car to be addressed. Great, thanks. Um, uh, Joyce had asked um, about, it said one of the sectors which has been severely affected with the current COVID-19 crisis is the financial sector. Um, particularly with women being more affected. Can this be reflected in the framework uh, issues around COVID-19? As I noted before, is that the framework isn't, um, or the wiki itself, isn't designed to necessarily have a COVID lens. But what you could do is you could look at the framework and um, some of the topics and then see how, um, what has changed within that um, bucket pre-COVID, post-COVID, and particularly if you think about um, how it may be more affect women more. Um, so the, the framework is designed to be a way that you could think through these issues, even though it may not explicitly be for women or post-COVID. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm having allergy issues this morning. Um, anyway, so, the, so even though it's not explicitly in there, any user could go in with that lens and be able to think about the issues within it with that lens and hopefully come to things that would be um, more useful in terms of eliminating those binding constraints. Um, awesome. Hi, this is Steve Watkins. I actually was doing a little bit of work with colleagues in the Columbia mission about COVID response yesterday, and I could briefly walk through the uh, how, how it, that might be used, uh, the five-point framework in that. It would take us a minute or two. Um, so the Columbia mission is very concerned about how to support uh, economic recovery post-COVID. And one of the things um, that they are concerned about is what sort of macroeconomic and monetary policies the government will uh, exercise to keep the economy kind of liquid so that people are able to access and spend money. That clearly belongs up in the enabling conditions uh, part of the framework. And so if you, if you wished to, um, to sort of learn more about what can be done there, you could use that part of the wiki to learn about uh, monetary and fiscal policy support and so on. Similarly, um, a big concern post-COVID is will banks have the confidence to lend money to businesses if they're unsure um, whether the business will recover, unsure if the sector the business is in will be asked to close down again, if there is a second wave of COVID and so on. So again, looking at the content under finance providers can help you understand that concern. And so, for example, um, in Colombia, they already have several uh, DCA guarantees in place, and they are looking at whether the terms of those guarantees could be amended to uh, reduce the risk of banks uh, continuing to lend under COVID and therefore allowing you know, finance seekers to access the money they need to restart their businesses and so on. So uh, they're just a, a very brief sort of illustration of how looking at different parts of the five-point framework to understand the implications of COVID and what interventions can support, um, hopefully the wiki will be a useful resource um, as we all increasingly asked to think about how can we help um, with the recovery from COVID. Right. It will probably be much more on um, the grant side for a while um, versus uh, the blended aspect of finance will be more on the donor and grant side probably in that recovery. Um, I know we're a little short on time. Um, there was one question from Mary about how the wiki has been populated to date. And uh, as I noted before, we're, we, there's a lot even our own work that isn't in there yet. Um, the wiki was largely populated with materials that Lawrence and I have developed in our Mobilizing Finance for Development course, which we offer to USAID staff members. Um, so that was the start of this. Um, the intent was always to include more of the examples from our own work and from our colleagues' work and from what we know from our um, partners, uh, 
like the World Bank and NGOs and others that are out there, and particularly our um, colleagues that focus on finance for specific sectors. Um, so we look forward to um, building it out over time. Um, but I know we're a couple minutes over. So let me go ahead and start concluding here by thanking you for attending today. Um, apologize for the technical issues. Uh, we will <laughs> uh, make all these materials available online afterwards. And there's some web links there now that you can um, link at. We have our private sector engagement resources as well as the wiki itself. Please feel free to go ahead and poke around and explore on your own and let us know what you think. Um, we really look forward to working with you all to make this resource as useful as possible for the entire Market League community. Um, the whole concept behind this as a wiki is to crowdsource content over time so it could evolve um, with our, as, as we learn and we, as we grow in our work. Um, in the future, um, as I said, beta, we're working towards 1.0. <laughs> 